I get asked the same questions every day, so I'm going to record this video explaining the answers. One question that I always get asked is, how do I book my retest date sooner for my driving test? Also, can I hire a car for my driving test? Can I use my friend's car for my test? Do I have to use my handbrake at traffic lights? Can I travel to the test center alone? And what test center is the easiest or should I pick this test center over that test center? Number one, how do I get my retest date sooner? So this only really applies for if you failed your driving test and you want to retest. So what people normally do is they go onto the system, they pay for their driving test, and then they wait to get a date sent. But what people have found out is if you go onto the system and you can't find a time or a date in the test center you want, they just back out of the system and check again later on. And they keep doing this. We're going to use fingers as an example here. But they keep going in and they don't pay for their retest until they see times and dates for fingers. The trick, stick to the test center you know. Don't go anywhere just for the purpose of redoing your test. You just have to keep going on and checking for times and dates. Because what happens is when people are canceling their test, say if I cancel my test for two weeks time, that time and date will be released back onto the system. But I don't know at what time, so all the times and dates will go back up, probably during the night when the system updates. So you just go on every day until you see a time and a date that suits you for fingless or whatever you're used to. And when you find a time and date that suits, only then do you pay for your retest. So that's what everybody seems to do. To, uh, I explain that in a lot more detail in the video in the description. I've done, a, I've done two TikToks about this. So next we're going to talk about using a higher car, such as GoCar, Hertz, Enterprise, for your driving test. So I've done a video about this recently saying that you're not allowed. But it turns out you actually are allowed on one condition you have to get a letter from the hire car company saying that yes you are allowed to drive this car for your driving test and you will be covered under their insurance i don't know what you would have to say to the hire car company because when you are hiring that for your driving test you're on a learner permit you're not on an international license or the license from your country so it is possible but I don't know how you would go about getting that letter to say, yes, you are insured to use this car for your test. That's something you would have to go through then. So next we're going to talk about using your friend's car for your driving test. So a lot of people ask me this, and yeah, of course you're allowed to use your friend's car for your driving test. If you're insured to drive that car, you can't just turn up in a car without an insurance policy. You'll be asked to sign something by the test that declaring that yes, I am insured to drive this car for me driving test. If anything happened and you were in an accident and you weren't insured, you would be in a lot of trouble. You've signed something saying that you are insured and then it turns out you're not. The insurance company won't cover the accident, so you'll have to pay for all the damages and you will lose your license for using it for driving a car knowing that you didn't have insurance. So make sure if you are using your friend's car, you have an insurance policy and it's obviously taxed, insured, all the bulbs and lights and everything else are in working order. So next I'm gonna answer the question of, do I need to use my handbrake when I'm stopped at a red traffic light? And the answer to this is no, you don't really have to use it, but it is good practice to use it when you're stopped at a red light. The reason why everybody asks me this is because when they see me do my driving test through videos around Dublin, I always say red light, when you stop, handbrake up into forced or neutral. The reason why I like to use it is because when I was becoming a driving instructor, I was I was doing all my lessons in a truck. So in a truck you would you would have to use it, but in a car, not so much. The reason why it would be safer to use your handbrake at a red light is Imagine if we're at a red light and I have my foot on the brake and someone goes into the back of me, automatically my foot is going to come off the brake 
and I'm gonna roll into the middle of the junction. Now that can be dangerous, especially if you're at a busy crossroads, or what if somebody was crossing the road in front of you, a pedestrian or whatever, you've got someone's gonna go into the back of you and then you're gonna roll into them, which is not ideal. So that's why you could use it, but it's not compulsory, so you don't really have to use it. Another question I get asked is, do I need to have a sponsor or someone with a full license with me when I'm going for my driving test? And the answer to this, I can only say yes to this because I'm a driving instructor. I can't tell you to break the law. If you go to your driving test and the tester sees you without getting out of your car, without somebody with a full license with you, the chances are they won't let you do your driving test. Sometimes the tester can ask, where is your full license driver or where is your sponsor or your instructor, whatever. It has happened before where tests have not gone ahead because the person didn't have a full license driver with them. So the answer to that is yes, of course you need to go to your driving test with your sponsor or someone that has that full license for over two years. And last but not least, what driving test center is the easiest or what's the highest pass rate or should I pick this test center over this test center? And I get asked this question so many times and it's, it's the wrong way to ask the question. And this is, what, this is the answer I always give. If you can't move off from a parked position correctly, it doesn't matter whether you go to Mulhuddard, Finglas, Rahini, Talla, the tester will mark you just the same for not being able to move off from a parked position. Also, if you can't reverse around the corner correctly, it doesn't matter where you go, you fail your test for not being able to reverse around the corner correctly. So don't worry so much about like what test center has the highest pass rate. Learn how to do the things correctly, like moving off, turn and left, turn and right, turn about, reverse around the corner and roundabouts. And then you should have no problem passing no matter where you go. It's this happens all the time. When I'm doing lessons with someone, when they're ready to pass, they will pass. It doesn't matter what test center. If they're not ready to pass because they don't know how to do things correctly, they fail the test no matter where they go. And the simple fact is, they're not doing what the tester wants to see. So always go to the test center that's, beso that's closest to you, that you know the roads, and just learn how to do everything correctly. I have videos for everything on my YouTube to show you how to do that. So I hope that video helped. Everything I did say, I'll try to leave videos in the description explaining what I mean. I've covered a lot of this sort of stuff on TikTok and stuff like this as well. So yeah, if your friends have any questions, send them this video. And then that will explain a lot of the things that is on everybody's mind by the looks of it. All right, so best look in your test. 